Divide and conquer is a time-honored strategy used by armies since the dawn of warfare. But in today's gospel, our Lord shows us another tactic, which if properly employed, is not only better, it's invincible. Dear brothers and sisters, Salve Maria. The time-honored maxim, divide and conquer, has been used all throughout history by the likes of Julius Caesar and Napoleon Bonaparte. It is a simple yet very effective strategy. Divide the enemy troops and attack each one individually to ensure a favorable outcome. It's so good, in fact, that even St. Paul used it against his opponents, as we hear in today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After St. Paul had concluded his evangelization and church founding activity, he returned to Jerusalem, where his arrival was marked by a Jewish plot to kill him. And just like our Lord, he was brought before the, this high priest and the Sanhedrin, where he was accused of actions against the Jewish faith and people. Recognizing that he wouldn't get a fair hearing in this for him, Paul cleverly deflected the attention of the Sanhedrin away from himself by instigating a controversy between two rival parties who were also present. It says here, Paul was aware that some were Sadducees and some Pharisees. So he called out before the Sanhedrin, my brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial for hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the group became divided. Note the word divided here. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection or angels or spirits, while the Pharisees acknowledge all three. And as we'll hear now, Paul's clever tactic to divide and conquer is a complete success. A great uproar occurred, and some scribes belonging to the Pharisee party stood up and sharply argued, We find nothing wrong with this man. The dispute was so serious that the commander ordered his troops to go down and rescue Paul from their midst and take him into the compound. Thanks to his nerves and shrewdness, obviously being inspired, Paul had been given a reprieve, for the time being at least. Now, if in order to beat the enemy, the evil ones, it is necessary to divide them, the only way we'll be able to succeed is if we, the good ones, are united. And that's exactly what our Lord prays for in today's gospel. It's from St. John chapter 17. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. And three more times, our Lord will go on to pray that we may be one as the Father and him are one. And how beautiful it is that his last wish before entering into his passion and agony is that they, that we, be united. So while the battle cry of Julius Caesar and many others throughout history was divide and conquer, ours must be unite and conquer. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you like this video, press the like button and leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our videos.